Good morning, uh, Glenn Dromgill, Tier 1 Engineering. I'm the principal of the organization and this is the ER44 helicopter. It's an all-electric modification of the Robinson R44 helicopter. We started the project in 2015, so it's been going on for six years. This is our second generation of the ER44. We're currently working on a third generation of the electric uh, Robinson and taking it through to certification. So the first version, Bird 1, was a technology demonstrator and that used commercial off-the-shelf battery and motor technology. Since that time, we have applied for a uh, opened a project with the FAA for certification. It's an SDC, a supplementary type certification. So it modifies the original type cert of the Robinson R44 for all electric propulsion. So in doing that, we have been developing certifiable hardware, the components that make up the electric propulsion system, the battery, the motor, the motor controller, and the cockpit display, and taking uh, those, developing those components further in a way that they would be certifiable. And BIRD 2 represents a partial progression towards that. So BIRD 1 has a V-belt drive system. The reason for that is the piston engine needs to obtain roughly 50% uh, RPM before you can drive the rotor. It just doesn't have sufficient torque at low RPM. So we've retained that system on BIRD 1 and BIRD 2. This is BIRD 2 behind us. Although the belts can be pre-tensioned, there is sufficient torque from the electric motor to drive the rotors from start up at zero RPM. So having the STC modification will involve the following changes. The OEM Lycoming motor is removed along with the fuel system. The Fuel bladders can be removed, anything related to fuel system. We replace that with an all electric drive system and the pilot controls are modified because we no longer require a throttle. The throttle is governed by an electronic system on the electric motor. The belt tensioning system is removed the V-belt tensioning, that's replaced with a synchronous belt drive. So no, there's no longer any pilot input required for that. It stays fully tensioned and engaged on the motor. A battery system is installed below the skids, as you can see in the aircraft behind us. And this is representative of the certifiable configuration. So it'll have a fairing, the pack fits between the, the skids, it's easily removable. It takes about five minutes to remove the pack. Uh, it's supported at four points with a pinned uh, attachment, which can be removed for either a swappable pack uh, in operation or for maintenance. So the engine in this helicopter uh, behind us is a commercial off-the-shelf motor supplied by Yasser. Uh, an English company, and their motors were specifically developed for automotive applications. One of the challenges is they didn't understand the regulatory requirements for aviation, particularly single fault failures. So we've partnered with Magnex, who are developing an aviation specific electric motor, and we believe. Uh, they're one of the leading companies in, in the field. Uh, we've partnered with them and on the next version, Bird 3, uh, we'll be incorporating uh, an early model of their, the Magnex engine, the Magni 250. Uh, we'll be doing demonstrator flights and, and developmental work with that. And then later this year, we'll receive the first certifiable motor, the, the Magni 350 and we'll be integrating that in uh, as we move towards certification. The Lycoming engine on this 
uh, helicopter here turns at 2700 RPM and that drives the sheaves and the belt system. One of the nice things about the Magni motors is they also turn at a very similar RPM. So they're essentially a drop-in replacement for the Lycoming. Uh, on Bird 2, the aircraft behind me, we didn't have that type of engine available and those engines turn at 6,000 RPM. And that's very common for an electric motor to spin at that higher RPM. So we had to develop a reduction gearbox to reduce that down to the, the Lycoming speed of around 2700. And then add, by adding the gearbox, we added complexity to the system. We added weight, uh, another source of failure. So it's nice to be able to move away from that with the Magni motor, have a direct drive and uh, a drop-in replacement for the OEM motor. So the maintenance is very little compared with a piston engine. Uh, one of the things operators of R44 aircraft know is you're constantly putting oil in the Lycoming engine. So after 10 hours of flight, you're probably putting a quarter of oil in the, heli in the engine. So there's no requirements like that. Uh, the battery pack's still in development and we're testing it. It really depends on the, the mission that you're flying, uh, the amount of current that you're drawing, how quickly you're discharging the pack, how quickly you're recharging it, um, service temperatures. So we're in the process of establishing those limits and determining the, the performance of the pack. One of the technical challenges with electric flight is dealing with the thermal uh, heat rejection from the system. On this version, we have five separate cooling systems. That sounds like a lot. The battery re requires cooling during flight and during charge. The motor has two cooling systems. It has air cooling of the rotor and it has fluid cooling with ethylene glycol of the stator. The motor controllers or the inverters have cooling as well with ethylene glycol. There is a reduction gearbox uh, from the motor to the, the belt drive system and that also requires cooling. And although electric propulsion is much more efficient than a piston engine, it still requires very careful development of cooling systems, lightweight cooling systems, for uh, cooling that small, much smaller amount of heat rejection. But it is significant and needs to be managed carefully. Now one area where battery development has progressed is in reducing the internal resistance of the cells and that makes a considerable difference uh, when it comes to the amount of heat you're managing uh, during flight. So on our next generation pack we're able to remove the need for cooling because the internal resistance of the cells that we're using is, has dropped uh, significantly so we no longer need in-flight cooling. Uh, we still need cooling on the ground for charging so when the aircraft lands, the pack is hot, uh, relatively hot, and we need to cool that pack down before we can put energy back in to recharge it. But uh, yeah, a lot of work has gone uh, into developing cells with low internal resistance, so the cell is more efficient and uh, the requirement for, uh, for cooling is no longer needed for flight. And yeah, so the two motors, uh, supplied by YAS are the commercial off-the-shelf motors. They have a rating of around 100 kilowatts. Now the combined rating is sufficient for continuous flight, the Rob Robinson R44. In the event that one fails, the other motor will try and spool up and provide sufficient power to compensate. Magnex is essentially two three-phase segments packaged as one. Okay. So there is redundancy in the Magnex motor, very similar to this, but it's packaged as one unit. Mm -hmm. In the event of the Magnex, one segment failing, the other segment 
essentially a, a, a single three-phase motor would spool up and give us sufficient power to continue safe flight. So we've tried to minimize the workload for the pilot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of instrumentation on the system that can be monitored, temperatures, voltages, current. But to the pilot, they just want to fly the aircraft and be alerted of a fault. Mm -hmm. They don't need to know what the, what the temperatures are and they just need to know if it's outside the operating limits and whether they need to land immediately or as soon as possible. Collective has a twist grip throttle which is no longer required on the electric motor because the electric uh, system maintains the rotor R RPM. We have repurposed the switch for the governor, this is the OEM governor, it now allows us to select between normal operating RPM, which is a 100 to 102% range, or 90% RPM to allow auto rotation training. Primary customer is United Therapeutics for organ delivery. It requires a pilot, a technician, and uh, cargo space for the organ care system so that's the containment system for the organ it's a portable containment system and we would be doing the the, the modification at our facility and providing the the helicopters uh, to uh, United Therapeutics. So our, our plan is to develop a kit an S supplementary type certificate as a kit a modification kit and our intention is to do the modification on site at Tier 1 Engineering and sell the complete certifiable aircraft to customers. That's not to say that the kit cannot be sold to internationally and the work performed abroad. But at this time the intention is to do the development in-house and the modifications. Our intent is to do the modification at the first overhaul at 2200 hours and that is a fairly expensive overhaul as it stands uh, requiring several hundred thousand of uh, parts and labour and we feel that it would be an opportune time to implement the, the kit. Uh, the cost of the electric motor will be less than a Lycoming engine. Oh. Uh, the battery system, we haven't got pricing on that, so there's several components to it. Uh, the battery pricing depends on volume and we haven't got a, a, a clear price at this point. Uh, and, and pricing's dropped considerably uh, since we started. And to give you an idea, cell pricing when we started was about $10 a cell. We can get them for $3 a cell now, and that's over a period of five years. So there's considerable um, improvements with the economies of scale of, uh, of cells. And uh, as the industry evolves, uh, pricing is coming down. So at this point, we're, we're reserving our, uh, our pricing on the battery. Uh, we anticipate a 20% reduction in operating cost of the aircraft. Uh, it does have a lower noise signature of 15 to 20 percent. There's possibly some improvements in fatigue life of the, of the airframe with lower vibration. Uh, it's really noticeable on the ground the amount of uh, vibration that the OEM engine generates uh, and you don't see any of that with the electric motor. It's very smooth in flight. Uh, so there may be some perform uh, performance improvements in, uh, in the fatigue life and, uh, and the life limits of some of the components uh, of this uh, particular model. For market, we think it's a great training aircraft. Uh, we anticipate a, a one hour operating flight time for, on the certifiable design. Charter and tour operators have expressed interest and uh, they're inquiring on flight times. Uh, obviously charging infrastructure is an important aspect of this. And obviously personal use uh, in areas where there's limited uh, fuels.